Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I wanna get into some altcoin gems for April. Now you can see them on the side here, but before you go out and buy any of these, I want to explain what it's about, looking at dates in particular, because some of these aren't ready yet, but they could be, so we need to understand what we're looking at in the charts. Now, if you find some value from the video, let me know, hit the like button down below, it really goes a long way to helping out the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here as well, still plenty of you, we're gonna to get to 110,000, and I've got the giveaway as well, giving away three 12 month memberships to the Investor Accelerator course, which is currently discounted as well, which uh, will be going up on the 1st of April. So let's have a look at altcoin gems today. Main things I wanted to look at were the timeframes as a guide as to when these could start to pop off and signals on the chart that we're looking at. Uh, we're projecting this into April. We're the 28th of March at the moment. I've got top seven here. Bold cryptos are the ones that I'm most interested in. Some of these I already have a position in, uh, but these are the ones I'm more interested right now, uh, waiting for signals. And then these other three are ones that I've got on the list, but I'm just not sure these are gonna perform as well as some of these in the next month or so. So that's why I've got these in bold. Uh, for the portfolio, if you're following along, I'm going to be selling some AUD, some BTC and some Theta because it's made some pretty big gains recently and possibly getting into, well, I will be getting into the graph, but like I said here, I'm still waiting on that bottoming signal, which we'll have a look at in the charts in just a moment. So let's have a look now and looking at Twitter. I've got Twitter, I'm active again, so if you want to follow me, uh, link is in the description down below. I only have one Twitter account, one Instagram account, one YouTube account. So anything else, they're scammers, stay away from them. Don't be sending them any cryptocurrencies. Uh, crypto rank platform. I'm gonna keep looking at this every so often. These are some of the pages that I follow on uh, Twitter because you can really see what is trending. So we look at market sentiment often, uh, but I'm just gonna look at, uh, pay some attention to the Twitter stuff at the moment. You know, this is sort of like the all-time high cryptocurrency. So this gets into people's minds straight away. Uh, stuff that's searched a lot as well. So uh, we can see here top 10 trending searches, Bitcoin, Theta, Omi, uh, One. All these have sort of popped off or they've had really big runs. Zill hasn't. And that's why I've got Zill on our list here, Zillica. It's at a $1.9 billion market cap. And I see that it's sitting ready. I've got my position and I'm waiting for that break. So that's why I take these into account. Uh, when people are commenting in the comment section about look at Omi or One or Matic, these things have already had massive, massive runs and I wanna find stuff that hasn't. And in, in this case, Graph is not trending at the moment, but I think it has the potential to trend. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Top 10 coins mentioned on Twitter, definitely Pancake Swap, Cardano always is on the list there. Ripple, uh, yeah, Pancake Swap, Doge is always on the list. So just interesting things to keep an eye on. Moving across, let's have a look at a little bit of news first. These are real people, or well, they're all real, but scamming people on Instagram. So be aware. I know there's a lot of new people. I've seen your comments saying, you know, just started following my channel after a few days or a few weeks. Pretty much be extremely aware of who's messaging you. Most YouTubers, Instagrammers won't be messaging you unless they're scammers like these sorts of guys. Jay Mazzini, scamming people out of Bitcoin, asking them to send them Bitcoin and they'll send them cash. It's it's crazy. Pump and dumps, Telegram groups, another real Twitter account, just saying uh, we're just gonna dump on people, spike up a cryptocurrency, a low cap, and then dump on them all. Just be really aware of all those sorts of things. So even when you're watching anything on, on my list, go and do your research. Like this thing here is a very low market cap and can move very, very easily. So you've got to be aware of that and it's not something just to go out and dump your money into because you can easily get pushed out of uh, a lot of money if you're buying those peaks. Money laundering might taint NFTs. Prepare for tighter controls. And so when we see controls, rules, regulations, usually scares people off. NFTs could begin to fall from that point if this gains traction. So just be aware in case you're buying things at peaks. Um, so just, yeah, look at that. Uh, money laundering, if you don't understand how that works, I've watched a couple of really good videos from Economics Explained, another Aussie YouTuber here, and he explains how you can basically purchase art. I'm doing a general overview here or a general explanation, and it's an easy way to transfer money around the world without paying tax. And so this could be a reason why they'll start to crack down on it. 
But once we know that, and if it does happen to crack down in the NFT space and these all sort of plummet 90, 99%, which I'm sure a lot of them will, it's a very new space, not much liquidity, it's bound to happen. Then we can really identify that it does have potential, the space itself, and then we can go out shopping for some cheap crypto. So once you understand that and you've got that knowledge, it's much easier to make a decision uh, later on when you see these prices dumping because it's very hard to actually buy these things when it's down. Bit of news on crypto.com. So crypto.org chain is now live. Uh, I believe their mainnet is live or it's coming out very soon. Their NFT platform is live. Here we go, mainnet launch. A um, lot of big stuff coming out for crypto.com. If you're interested to get your own card, then there is a link in the description down below. You can get yourself crypto.com card. 25 US dollars of CRO token as well when you stake some of the CRO. Crypto.com, they're uh, giving away an NFT so you don't have to purchase this one. Basically, if you sign up for Crypto.com NFT, uh, their platform by March 31st, you'll get this NFT for free. So could be worth something in the future. It's free. Why not? Signing up to that. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has dropped more than Bitcoin itself, are down about 20%, which is about double what Bitcoin has fallen this week. This could be another reason why Bitcoin is still below its all time high. It's just starting to lag. This is like the biggest Bitcoin holder in the world, Grayscale, grayscale Trust. So you can't sell, you, you basically can't come in and buy, buy it cheap in Grayscale and then sell it back to the market. So that's a good thing for the market itself. Um, but overall, I think that just brings a little bit of negativity to the space until this is all sorted out or it's cleared up, their pricing has come back to meet the market. Then maybe we'll start to get a little bit of a push on from there. But overall, it's not like bad news that's really going to destroy the space. It's just something to be aware of as maybe why this is a reason on recent price action over the last couple of weeks. GODB was the crypto on our list. This is the lowest cap crypto. I've talked about it in previous videos. Market cap, 25 million, looking really good. If you want to know more about that, I've got some videos coming up, but also go back and check out those videos. GODB, we basically got it from around $1.50 or so. It started at around 18 cents back in December. So pretty good gain so far. This is CoinMarketCal. They've got a big token burn coming up, burning about 65% of their GEO tokens. Pretty big deal. Also Horizon, something I talk about, $50 at the moment, just checking it out on CoinMarketCal. It's got nothing to do with any of the things on the list, but they've got a lot of big things coming up. So I just wanted to make mention to that on the new section. All right, let's have a look at the charts, starting with Ethereum. Ethereum, we can see good ranges, time ranges, 25 weeks, 23 weeks, 26 weeks, 28 weeks, 23 weeks, 25 weeks, 24 weeks. There is a pattern here. There is a really solid pattern. It's about six months. Ethereum does approximately six month moves, generally up six months, six months, six months. We've got a bit of a sideways move from a breakout. So what I'm measuring in these points are tops to breakout areas. That's what I got across here. There's a top. That's when we get the breakout. Volume confirms that breakout. 11 weeks. So basically got cut in half on the recent time. Top breakouts around here. See the volume breaking out of the next high approximately 11 weeks. Now, I've posted this on YouTube community posts a few weeks ago now, basically on that first dump, and I was looking for how to pick a time frame that we're going to get back to this new all-time high. And so I picked around 5 to 11 weeks, could be half of this time frame because we have seen the time frames begin to halve, but it could also be about 100% of this time frame as well. We're just getting guides here to sort of figure out where it's going. So if we uh, get into that 100% range, then it leads us into April. We're nearly there. Could be sometime in April that we get a nice push out of Ethereum. If it does happen, I would be looking for approximately six months, this sort of 23 to 28 week move. I find it incredible. We might have to measure that from the low. That's what I've got here with these lows of 24 weeks. It's the actual low. But if that's the case, that's a pretty solid run. And this is a very solid reaccumulation above the old highs, which is why it's on my list as an April buy. So check it out. Accumulation zone. Ethereum is very high on my list. It's probably the safest one that I've got here, which is, uh, you know, out of the top 10, definitely one of the safest ones that can move. So Ethereum, B 
big time on my list. They're the reasons why. If we want to talk more about that, of course, the Investor Accelerator link is down below with the discount until the 31st. So you've got a couple of days left at the uh, the cheapest rate it's going to be. Next crypto I had on the list, Polkadot, th uh, 30 billion. Polkadot ranges, a little bit less data here, but it likes to do two months or cycles of about two months. So you can see here 118 days. That's until the breakout. Uh, the low is probably at probably about a month. So here's a top and we're just measuring probably a low. That's two, uh, two months. And then here's another low here, about 34 days, 36 days. So just longer than a month, approximately about uh, five weeks there. And so 118 across the bottom here. Let's measure that out again just to make sure. Yeah, 118 days there, looking good. These measures across the low, 58. There you go, 60 days, 34 days. Nice, okay, so that's what I'm looking at here on Polkadot. 60 days to the top, that's from this low to the top. This is measured to the breakout, see that volume? Breakout, broke the highs, broke the high, away it goes. What I'm looking at here, we've got a 50% drop. That's a good sign. If we happen to go a little bit further, then I'll just move my fib back to the next low and look for around $24 drop. But I think we might have found a low here. There's some good volume coming in, especially from recent uh, two-day bars. And this does uh, go above all of these other bars here. So Polkadot, I think it's looking like a pretty good move. If we get a similar move here, see 54 to 60 days, depending on if you want to measure it from the low or the breakout point, then if we go another 50 to 60 days, that brings us into later April. 50 days is early to later April. So that's why that's on the list. I think Polkadot has got some solid ground to go. I can feel the news moving into that space of uh, narrative shifting to Polkadot to get that little breakout. Next on the list, Chainlink. Not much news has come from Chainlink lately, but if we look at our timeframes, it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter. 500 or so days from top to the first breakout. Now, if we if you zoom in and do this for yourself, you'll really see that I've gone into the detail of the day itself. So I'm looking at this top now, breakout that day, high volume. So that's what we want to see. Retest, nice. That's measured from the top back here. And then if I want to take the other breakout, which is actually breaking this top, that's the 518 days. But I want to know a good early time to get in. I don't want to be getting in up here at $1.60 when I could have the potential to get in at 65 or 70 cents. So that's what I'm doing further uh, forward on the chart. These times are beginning shorter and shorter. 378 for the breakout, 147, 77. It's not exactly half, but we're getting into that sort of frame now. 150 days, 75 days, it's halving, it's halving, it's halving. And that brings us into early May, maybe late April. So it's on the list, it's been quiet, they're building, I like Chainlink, it's accumulation time at this point. Where do we go from here? We'll look at that in other videos, but for today, these are my altcoins for April and why in terms of time frames, and this is how I do it. Okay, so here is Zillica, and these time frames are about 166 to 188 top to the breakout, and this is the other breakout here, which basically pushed the market even further. There's the first one, second breakout. 44 days top to breakout, 24 days top to breakout, another 24 days takes us into April. If it happens to extend to the 44, then that's going to push us out to late April, but it's still in that April period. The US dollar chart is a little bit, uh, looks a little tougher to be breaking these highs because we are getting back to these old all-time highs that are set back in 2018. Uh, that was during the bear market. This is kind of like that Cardano chart, you know, where we've just had this huge accumulation zone and then it's beginning to break out. So Zillica, I think, has some really strong potential. It, it The narrative was super strong back here in October and it just went on a massive charge from about two cents to, you know, currently where we see it at around 20 cents. So a solid 10x there. Zillica BTC chart is the one that I like more. Just look at that. It's just been building up huge volume and we have not broken down from that point there. So horizontal, covering the bases here. See the volume here, all this gray, push the market up and we did not get back to these lows, which is a good sign, sign of strength. And now we're really starting to wedge up into these old support levels. So I think we're going to break out at some point and it's getting very, very tight. So Zillica, big one on my accumulated list, I'm waiting for the signal. And that's what I'm talking about 
when you look back here, Zillica ready, waiting for the break. So I don't think it's too late on Zillica. Uh, and I think there's a big upside potential. Obviously, we're just going to be looking at these levels here, which is at around uh, 500 Satoshis, 650 Satoshis, 1,000 Satoshis, 1,300 Satoshis, just all of these support and resistance zones on the way up again. That could give us about 100%, oh, about 80% to the first, 130, 120% to the second point, about 250% to the third point that I'm looking at. So all good zones to accumulate more Bitcoin. Next up, Graph, Amisego, and Geo. I'm going to do these three. These are going to be our top seven for April. I'm not going to look at these. Uh, we've looked at those on other videos, but I'm just going to do these top seven and get it in in the 20 minutes for you guys. Uh, graph, Amisego, GeoDB. GeoDB, let's start there. It's It doesn't have too much data because it is new. It's only on Uniswap <laughs> and it's terrible looking data. So back to one day, four hours, there's just nothing here. Could be getting a nice push down. There's, there are the old support levels, resistance. Uh, way, we're looking at some crazy number here. So <laughs> take that for what you will. That's probably the level right about there, 0 0.0009 or 001. Something around there looks pretty decent for GeoDB. Again, super high risk, huge volume at these highs. Beware that when you get high volume at the highs, we're only on a four hour chart, might come back and retrace a little. So that's Geo. Uh, Let me say go and then the graph because that's my favorite one out of all these. OMG. Here we are on Binance, four hour chart. Let's bring it back to a two day to bring in some of the data. 261 days down, 160 days up, 124 days down, 54 days up. You can see that the time frames are shortening and shortening. It's just winding up like a rubber band. We have good resistance levels above us, similar to what we just saw on Zillica. All right, they're in the same space. I think the narrative is shifting across to layer two solutions, Ethereum, all that sort of stuff coming out through to June. You know, they pushed out their date, layer two was delayed. So I think these are gonna come back into the spotlight to try and help the space. But you can see that the timeframes are winding up a hell of a lot. So uh, Amisego is on that list as well, but I like Zillica a little more. Just looking at Amisego Bitcoin, this is huge. Like the, the potential for Amisego to pump in Bitcoin value is massive, but it doesn't have the same look as Zillica in this chart. It still looks like it's gone back to an accumulation zone. And so it could just break and it's it's gone from this point. You know, just if it goes, it just does 16 days, 18 days up, and then that's it. It just fades. So you only get two weeks of a pump. That's why I've got it for April, but it's a lot more challenging to trade this one. Last one, which is one of my favorites, is the graph. So G R T. GRT, USD, the levels I've got for support. I want to see it form a base at around $1.20 back to a dollar. So anywhere in this range would be good. I'll throw a little box on it for you guys there. That's pretty much what I'm looking at there. So all the way down, even to around that 85 cent to that $1.50. Pretty big range, but I want to see a, a bottom form first and then start to accumulate. I'm not going to pick the bottom. I just want to see a bottom and see a turn come. GRT, BTC, same sort of deal got the box on. This is a nice little swing low area. So somewhere around the 2,000 to 3,000 Satoshis, that would be a good level of support. We get that nice move, that accumulation zone graph, I think could be back on for us in April, if not just within a few months of that. The time frames are looking pretty good. So keep these on the list. They're my altcoins for April. Hope you enjoyed that. You can see the reasoning for them. I'm looking at time frames here because we're trying to get them to fall into that area. None of it is guaranteed. These are just some projections looking at chart patterns. Let me know in the comments what you're liking the look of for uh, altcoin gems in April. And maybe we can add them to a list and check them out in future. In future, we'll look at it and keep it to around three to five coins so that we can fit it all into 20 minutes. Thank you very much for joining me again. If you found value, hit the like button. It's a very easy, free, cheap way to help out the channel grow to 110,000 subscribers. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already bell notification icon last call for the march sale 10 percent off limited time prices will increase on the first of april that's for the investor accelerator i'll post this video in the group and the guys and we'll chat about it over there thanks again for joining me on the channel guys until next time have more fun to get more done